Hello, uh, today we will discuss uh, something uh, really important and uh, which is uh, really used inside the APIs and the whole API ecosystem. So uh, let's understand uh, some basic uh, concept behind that. So let's suppose uh, there is a person uh, who and who is the owner of the company uh, and uh, he places all the files inside the uh, main server so uh, there are a few persons uh, inside the company like um, bar and buzz who own some files and um, those files are uh, are also uh, placed on the main server so uh, what happens is uh, they are provided uh, some sort of uh, credentials like uh, access key id and the secret key uh, to access the files on the server so and these can be uh, accessed uh, through uh, http request uh, sent to the server uh, over the network so uh, let's say bar sends the uh, request uh, okay server give me that file which um, bars is not authorized to access and my uh, access key id and uh, secret key is that you know abc blah 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 so uh, bars bars is uh, you know really a bad guy and he is uh, uh, you know he really wants to hack into the system and uh, wants to uh, you know uh, access that file which is owned by bar actually so uh, what he does is uh, somehow he manages uh, to access the secret key and uh, access key id uh, you know uh, through uh, some sort of uh, hacking or whatever uh, like he hacks into the system or uh, hacks into the network so uh, he sends that uh, request through uh, you know by uh, adding credentials in his uh, own URL and that can be accessed uh, and that file can be served uh, to him as well so how uh, can we uh, you know uh, prevent um, that uh, all that stuff okay so one method is uh, that uh, uh, this access key id usually is public okay but the secret key uh, is not uh, to be shared by you know shared to anyone so uh, access key ID is, uh, you know, uh, a secret key is uh, uh, owned by the uh, person and uh, is not supposed to give uh, to any, uh, any, anyone else and is, uh, you know, uh, transmitting that, uh, you know, as it is uh, through the network uh, will be really dangerous. So, uh, we can sign that. Uh, uh, secret key uh, through some sort of mechanism so let's see uh, how we can sign uh, that uh, secret key uh, through an example uh, we will be using uh, AWS for that and uh, uh, we will be using S3 so inside S3 I have uh, created a bucket and uh, that bucket inside that bucket i have a file and that file is accessible through this url but i can't access that since i did not provide my credentials and this file is not public so how can i let uh, AWS know that this is really me and I am uh, accessing that file so uh, let's 
do some uh, coding stuff inside the Python so that we can solve this problem. Okay, so AWS uh, has uh, some you know some so some sort of uh, signing uh, uh, procedure and uh, which is uh, well documented uh, documented over here. So uh, this is the piece of code I have uh, you know uh, copied and pasted over here, and uh, this uses hashlib and hmac you know uh, for signing the information we want to send uh, to the server so uh, what we are using what method we are using get what is the service s3 and the host is s3 dot amazon aws dot com okay and the endpoint endpoint is uh, simply a url which uh, we are accessing and the request parameters are the uh, parameters we provide inside the url like s equal to one two three whatever okay so since we do not need over here so we will not provide them over here so uh, these functions are provided by AWS inside the docs and over here I can see access key and the secret key so basically these uh, should not be exposed like this and, uh, and they can be uh, accessed from the environment variables like os.environment uh, dot get so uh, you can uh, store them inside your environment variables so after that we have all this procedure going you know and after that uh, the headers are generated and we pass those headers inside a request okay so when we create the request we get the 403 code why because we what we are accessing we didn't provide we didn't uh, actually in, uh, encrypt that and uh, that's why the thing which is uh, calculated the signature which is calculated by AWS doesn't match you know request time too skewed and uh, the difference between the request time and the current time is too large okay why this happens anyways so the reason behind that I know is this because the request parameters and this whole you know uh, string is provided over here so we don't need that actually and this should be 200 but that is 403 okay let's see what is inside r dot content request time is queued okay let's see what happens let's run it again and now oh no and that will go that will take a lot of time because r dot content has you know some bytes which will which are really huge so anyways uh, let it uh, let's let it uh, run okay so this is 
byte code we get from here so let's comment that okay actually printing this in the contents of uh, an image actually hangs in this kernel so let's wait for this anyways let's pause this and I will come back so this is how it is done so let's understand what is going on over here okay over here we can see the sign function which returns the hmac dot new with the message encoded as the utf8 along with the key we provide okay so the key can be the access key the data stem the region and the service name so we will see how uh, this uh, signing procedure is uh, going inside this function so this initially at, uh, at this point we provide the key the key the access key you know let's see where this function is called over here we provide the secret key you know the secret key which is not to be exposed and that is encrypted over here so we encrypt that over here and after that there is n data stem which is uh, you know required by AWS that you know at uh, what point of time I'm accessing that object and then the region name you know when this is signed okay this signature is you know signed with another parameter and this procedure it goes on you know uh, unless we have enough in information okay so uh, now another important part is uh, these dates okay and the time should be the epoch time and the date should be in, in, in this format and this is and the date time should be inside uh, you know like this in this format and date stamp should be like in this format so that we can provide inside the scope so uh, the canonical URI from the first step uh, you know when we uh, get or post a request we always provide a path like an example uh, get request so over here we have a path like this this is the path and we provide the host and other parameters so then we provide the canonical query string which are the request parameters uh, like I discussed before uh, those can be the ones which can which are uh, provided through uh, you know get parameters okay and after that we 
create some canonical headers so canonical headers are uh, a list you know separated by uh, a line uh, where we provide the host and the date and the signed headers are the list of headers you know the keys of the headers which are uh, to be provided and this is really important payload hash this hash uh, is uh, you know calculated through SHA 256 algorithm so uh, when um, there is a get request we don't need to uh, provide this uh, over here but when there is a post re request uh, we need to provide the post parameters you know mm, so that uh, they can be uh, encrypted so after that the canonical request request is uh, the way we uh, you know create the request like the method get and after that there is a single line for host for host which is canonical uri okay and the canonical query string okay so we the, usually we have host but over here we provide the path which is canonical uri and the canonical query string and so on till the payload hash after that there is something really important which is credential scope we need to provide that anyhow so that we uh, we let AWS know that uh, what uh, is the scope of the credentials and uh, what can be accessed through that so we provide the date stamp region service and after that this string so that we uh, know uh, uh, the AWS knows uh, um, which method uh, encryption method is provided so after that the string is to be signed algorithm uh, ANZ date credential scope and hash lib dot SHA 256 and the canonical request is to be encoded uh, to be encrypted inside that okay then we get the signature okay that signature is generated through HMAC okay so we first get the signing key and after sign and that signing key is uh, uh, you know mm, converted into the signature and after that we generate authorization headers okay so this is how it works and uh, let's plot this um, the request uh, the you know the body of the request uh, as an image and save it inside our directory so here we get that image okay so that uh, concludes my uh, video uh, if there are any questions uh, you can let me know in the comments and uh, if uh, there is something I uh, couldn't uh, you know uh, explain properly just let me know and I will uh, make another video for that okay so till then bye bye